Welcome to Candid Conversation number 713. Today's question, what was the purpose of the Levitical Law? A lot of times, uh, churchianity, the way they look at it, first off, the reason they don't understand it is they don't rightly divide the word of truth. When you think that the entire Bible is written to you, uh, then you have a problem because you're looking at those animal sacrifices under the Levitical law and you say, well, why why would they do that? Hebrews 10.4 says the blood of bulls and goats, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. So why does God have kill all, God have them kill all those animals? Especially nowadays when it's seen like, like, oh no, you can't, you know, the poor little animal, you can't kill him. You know, the poor little lamb, the sheep, oh, he's so cute, we don't want to kill him. Oh, you know, and here, they're doing it because God told them to. Okay, well, that makes sense. But then why does God tell them that? If it won't take away their sin, why are they killing all these innocent little animals? And, you know, what do you do with it? So, now churchianity comes along and they say, oh, well, don't worry about all that stuff because it was just to show them that, uh, it was to show them their sin. And so now we had to have uh, Jesus, when he died on a cross for our sins, then now we don't have to do the animal sacrifices anymore. Well, that's true, but uh, I mean, it's true in the sense that that's why God had the, the purpose. The purpose of the Levitical law was to show Israel their sin. That's the answer to the question. But why would you, uh, you know, why do all that? And you say, well, then he took away Jesus' um, Jesus took away that, so we don't do the animal sacrifices anymore because Jesus' death atoned for their sins. Well, yeah, that's true, but why even have it in the first place? And also, you still have animal sacrifices going on um, after the cross. You still have it now in the dispensation of grace. We don't do that. But then you pick that back up after Israel's program resumes. You read the end of Ezekiel, they're doing animal sacrifices in God's kingdom. So you see animal sacrifices in the Old Testament, you see it in the millennial reign. Why have all those animal sacrifices? It doesn't make any sense if the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin. And, and also, it's not just that. You know, if you just said, okay, once a year there's the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and they would take the, you know, and make the sacrifices on that, on that day to atone for the sins of the people, and they did that once a year. Okay, but what about all the other ones? There were drink offerings, meat offerings, peace offerings, you know, trespass offerings, sin offerings. You have all these different offerings that they had. There wasn't just one, you know, the, the sacrifice of Jesus. Okay, now we eliminate the once a year Day of Atonement sacrifices based off of that. Okay, I get that. But what about all the other sacrifices? You know, and God knows that it doesn't take away sins, but there was some kind of fellowship with God through the meat offering, the drink offering, the peace offering, the uh, burnt offering, the trespass offering, the sin offering. There were all these different offerings. Those were done on an individual basis where you'd bring in the animal for those purposes. You'd bring the specific animal that you needed for that purpose. And that, um, so if, in other words, if the animal sacrifices were given and they were going to be replaced by Jesus' death, what do you do with all the other ones? Because that only takes care of the Day of Atonement, the Yom Kippur sacrifice. What do you do about all the other sacrifices? And it's not just that. There are other rules, too. Don't mar the corners of your beard. Beards don't have any markings. Like we would say that, you know, there'd be tattoos in you. Um, you know, there was a purification for women that they were not allowed to do certain things during their, their monthly period, that they would be unclean, that the, anything they touched would be unclean. Uh, you've got um, the rules of leprosy. There's a whole long chapter in the book of Leviticus about what to do with someone with leprosy. Uh, you think COVID is restrictive and the vaccines and the social distancing and the masks. Oh, the leprosy thing is even is far more restrictive. You read Leviticus. So, 
Okay, you can make the argument that Jesus' death takes care of the animal sacrifice for Yom Kippur, but there's a whole lot of other stuff in there. Um, you know, what about the a man, a woman, a woman makes a vow, and if a man hears it, uh, his wife, his husband, her, her husband <laughs> hears it, uh, he can disallow it. Or what about the other rules of the law, like you get killed for working on the Sabbath? If you work on the Sabbath, you're worthy of death. I mean, why? There's a whole slew of laws there under that Levitical law that we don't follow today. So you explain away everything with Jesus' death, but that that just all that does is explain Yom Kippur. You got a whole slew of laws that we haven't even touched yet. Why is it that it's okay to get a tattoo today? Why is it that I can wear a, a shirt with polyester and cotton in it? That, that was forbidden under the Levitical law. Why is it that I can mar the corners of my beard and that's not a sin today? There are all these rules in there. Uh, when you go to the temple, the cleansing that you do, there was the outer court for the Gentiles, the inner court for the Jews, and the priest could go in the Holy of Holies. You got all these rules and regulations and and so, you, Jesus Christ's death, yeah, that takes care of the, the, uh, the Yom Kippur, but what about everything else? What we're missing here, and the purpose of Levitical law, is that, and this is what's different about it, is that God made a covenant with unbelieving Israel. That's what the Levitical law is. They're unbelievers. And Hebrews 9 says, that the sacrifices that they provided under that system purify to the sanctifying of the flesh, but that the blood of Christ purges the conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And you don't have to wait for Jesus to die for that to take place. Um, you, because it, and because also you have all that Levitical law resumed under the Millennial Kingdom. Basically what it is is that Galatians 3.24 says the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Abraham, for example. God tells him in Genesis 15, look at the stars in heaven. And if you're so, uh, so shall, see if you can count them, so shall your seed be. And it says that Abraham believed God and believed in the Lord and he counted it unto him for righteousness. You notice he didn't, not once did he give him a Levitical law. And I understand he did have the battle against Sodom or with Sodom, I think it was, battling against these other nations. I think it's Genesis 14. And he does provide sacrifices at the end, but that was in praise. Um, he gave tithes to Melchizedek. There, but he didn't, there was no Levitical law there. There was no priest that had to go before God before him. He didn't have to have any cleansing ceremonies. He didn't have to provide the sacrifices. You never see Abraham bringing meat offerings, drink offerings, meal offerings, sin offerings, trespass offerings, burn offerings, peace offerings. You don't see him doing that stuff. Uh, so, my point is, is that Hebrews 11:6 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. God is always looking for faith. And so he sees Abraham, and he sees somebody who has faith in him. So he says, I'll give you your seed as numerous as the stars in heaven. And then Abraham believes him, he has faith, and now he has righteousness. And there was no Levitical law or anything. And it's the same thing for us today. Now, he doesn't tell us, God doesn't tell us our seed will be as numerous as the stars in heaven. But he does say that uh, he will give us eternal life in heavenly places. And again, we don't have to go through all the, the Levitical law. I don't have to worry about, uh-oh, there's, you know, 20% polyester in this shirt. I don't know if there is, but let's just say that. That's a sin in the Levitical law. I'm disobeying scripture by wearing a shirt with mixed fibers in it right now. I'm I'm in I'm disobeying scripture, but it's not a sin for me because I'm not under the Levitical law. I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. The law is your schoolmaster to bring you under Christ that you might be justified by faith, but after that faith has come you're no longer under a schoolmaster. Abraham was under the schoolmaster of the conscience, that was his law. 
and Abraham through that saw that he was a sinner and so then God gives him the gospel and he believes it and he's justified by faith with Israel God says I'm gonna give you the promised land you just have to trust in me to bring you out and bring you into the promised land he doesn't mention the Levitical law there he says I'm gonna take you out of Egypt with all these plagues and then I'm gonna have you go through the wilderness and then you'll go into the promised land and he didn't give them the Levitical law but the problem is is they didn't believe God so God says okay you haven't learned the the lesson of the law of the conscience so now I've got to bring another law and that's what the Levitical law is it's just like if you have a kid and the kid you tell him the law what you want him to do but he disobeys you so then you you and he keeps disobeying you so then what you do is you bring a stricter law so maybe you have two kids and the one kid can stay out till let's say 10 p.m. at night but the other one has to be in when it's dark but why are you so restrictive on the one about the dark and not the other one Well, it's because the one that um, has to be in by dark is rebelled against you and everything else not doing his homework not doing his chores around the house and so you make it restrictive well you got to be in here you got to do your homework you got to do the chores whereas the other one he's already responsible enough to do the chores and do the homework and so then you tell him well you can you you're doing what you're supposed to do so you have the freedom to go out there and um, be out there longer Israel Abraham is a type of the good child who believes God God counters it to him for righteousness Israel is an example of the bad child they're in unbelief God says I'll take you out of Egypt bring into the promised land I'm gonna give you the land you don't have to do anything just believe that I'll do it and they don't believe so then God says well you didn't learn the lesson of the conscience and since you're rebellious against me then I've got to give you another law and so then God gives a Levitical law and it's all about the flesh because they're walking by sight and not by faith all they care about is the flesh every time in the wilderness would to God that we had died in Egypt because there we had plenty of food to eat of course they're slaves it's not like Pharaoh treated them greatly oh yeah we were great in, in, in Egypt wish we could have stayed there but no we got to go out in this wilderness trusting God that's how they're acting so then God says well you're so concerned about the flesh then I'm gonna give you a law to purify the flesh and so then you'll be okay flesh wise and of course if they look at that then they'll say there's no way I can do all this stuff because I keep sinning I keep doing stuff wrong so then I got to do all this cleansing ceremonies so God basically the purpose of the Levitical law is to give Israel a bunch of unbelievers and that's the key they're unbelievers an additional law so that they will recognize their sin and trust in God to save them you look at Saul Saul did the animal sacrifices he did tons of them and yet when he came back from the battle he was supposed to do sacrifices but God says wait for Samuel the prophet to get here and then you'll do the sacrifices and he didn't wait for him he just went ahead and did the sacrifices and God tells him through Samuel it is better to obey than to sacrifice he didn't learn the lesson of the law David on the other hand so then God takes the kingdom away from Saul because he didn't wait for Samuel David on the other hand does a far worse thing than not waiting for Samuel he commits adultery he murders the woman's husband and yet God doesn't count that sin against him he doesn't take the kingdom away from him it's because he's a believer he followed his flesh in a couple cases there which everybody does everybody follows their flesh so he follows the flesh that's bad but he has still believed God to save him he's trusting in God he's not trusting in a sacrificial system like Saul was so the sacrificial system is the law being their schoolmaster to bring them under Christ and that's the whole purpose of it so Israel in the Old Testament has that sacrificial system and they have it up to the time of Jesus second coming and then now there is you still have sacrifices in the kingdom but primarily at least in that millennial reign is for the Gentiles the sacrifices are you know if obedience is better than sacrifice 
and obedience basically means you have faith in what God has told you, then if you've obeyed the gospel, meaning you believe the gospel to be saved, then the sacrificial system isn't needed, just like the, the two boys. The one boy can stay up till 10 p.m. and be out because he has not rebelled against his parents. He's done what his parents told him to do, so he has liberty. He's not under that law, the curfew, the, the 6 p.m. curfew, let's say. But the other child, because he's rebellious, has to be in by 6. And then he's got to spend those other four hours in homework or chores or whatever because he's not responsible to do those things without that extra law. And so that's what that sacrificial system is. The re so they're under that Levitical law. Israel is under that Levitical law until Jesus' second coming because that's when they receive atonement for sins. But then they're still going to have some sacrifices and things in the kingdom to remind them of where God brought them out of. And you've got Gentiles um, who are not under that covenant who are put under that Levitical system with the sacrifices and everything just so they can learn like the Jews are supposed to learn so that the Gentiles can learn of their sin and uh, trust in God to save them at the end of the millennial reign. So the purpose of the Levitical law is to bring rain in rebellious people. It's like that child with the 6 p.m. curfew. He's got an extra law of the curfew because he's been rebellious against his parents. And so to Israel, because they haven't believed God, they've got that extra Levitical law. And that's not written to us. It's for our learning that we shouldn't do those things, but we don't have to, I mean, do those sins, but we don't have to obey the Levitical law because we're not under the law, we're under grace. For us, God gave us the law of the conscience. He never made a covenant with us Gentiles today outside of that conscience. Contrary to popular belief, America is not God's chosen people. We're not his nation. We're not spiritual Israel. So God didn't make the Levitical law with us. And so he just had the law of the conscience. And once we learn that lesson of the conscience to the point where we believe the gospel, we recognize our sin as a result of the law of the conscience showing us our sin. And then we trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for our sin. Then we're given the gift of eternal life. And so we're never under the Levitical law because we weren't in an unbelief status like Israel was where God makes us his chosen people and we still disobey. He never did that with us. And then, um, and then after we're saved then, of course, we're not under the law of the conscience anymore. We're under grace. Uh, so all those rules, the reason we don't follow those rules has nothing to do with Jesus' sacrifice. But it has everything to do with faith in God. Because Abraham, you know, Noah, Noah didn't do uh, the Levitical law. God had him build an ark. Adam didn't do the Levitical. Abel didn't do the Levitical law. He brought a, a sacrifice um, to, the, um, to the Lord at the, at the entrance there of the Garden of Eden there where the mercy seat was. He met the Lord with that sacrifice there. But you didn't have him, oh, you can't mar the corners of your beard, you can't wear a tattoo, you can't wear a shirt with mixed fibers in it. He didn't have those things. So the, the whole purpose, the reason, and the reason it's there, and the reason we don't, the reason it's there is it's written to unbelievers. Whereas Paul's epistles are what's written to us today, and they're written to believers. People have already believed the gospel. So we don't need to have the purifying of the flesh because our soul's already been purified by the blood of Christ. And so we were never under that Levitical law, and we don't have the future need for it as well. But Israel, they were under that law because of their unbelief. And so we look at that, and you'll say, people will say, well, you should do the, the moral part of the Levitical law we're under, but not the ritualistic part. Well, that's picking and choosing. You can't choose which commandments you're going to obey. You can't say, well, there are 10 commandments. Here, you only have to obey these six, but the other four you don't have to do. No, if you're under the Ten Commandments, you have to obey all ten. So if you're under the Levitical law, you have to obey everything. And But they'll say, well, don't obey the ritual part because it's taken away by Jesus' death. Well, there's other parts. You know, the the beard, the, the tattoos, the shirt with mixed fibers, the different things like that. Why don't we obey that? 
That's not a ritualistic part of the law. Uh, they'll say, well, it's not a moral of the law. Well, who's to say that's not moral? I mean, you don't think in your conscience that uh, wearing a shirt with mixed fibers is bad, but uh, God apparently did because he put it in the Bible. So, you know, you can't pick and choose. You're either under it all or you're under none of it, you know? Um, and so the answer is we're under none of it because we're not in a status of unbelief. God didn't use the Levitical law to get us to be saved. He used the law of the conscience. And so once we're under that, I mean, once we've learned the lesson of the law, then we're not under a schoolmaster. We've been justified by faith and we're under grace. So we were never under the law. Well, what about shouldn't I obey the Ten Commandments? Yeah, but you do that because you have Christ as a natural result of Christ living in you. If I've got sound doctrine in my inner man and I show God's love to others, I'm not going to kill them. I'm not going to steal from them. I'm not going to commit adultery. I'm not going to covet their possessions. I'm, I'm going to obey the Ten Commandments as a natural result of living by the faith of the Son of God. I'm not under the law, but I'll go ahead and obey it. You know, just like when you're married, you don't have to do certain things, but you're, if you love your, your spouse, then you are going to do things as if you were under a law. And that's what grace is all about. If you're going to make the right choices without me giving you a law, then you don't need a law. You're under grace. So purpose of the Levitical law to reign in unbelieving Israel so that they may recognize their sin and trust in God to save them. Today, God does that with the conscience. We're not under any of that Levitical law. Certainly, we should obey the moral parts of it, but that's only God's love coming through us, not some legalism. We do that in grace, not under the law. Thanks for watching.